My name is Pamela Smart, and I was born in Coral Gables, Florida, on August 16, 1967. My parents were John and Linda Woges, and we moved to Derry, New Hampshire when I was in 8th grade. I attended secondary school at Pinkerton Academy, where I was a cheerleader, and then went on to study communications at Florida State University. I was the host of a college radio program while at FSU, which I loved. I met Gregory Smart while I was visiting New Hampshire over Christmas break in 1986. We hit it off and started a relationship in February 1987. Two years later, we got married, and Gregory moved to Florida to live with me during my senior year at FSU. However, seven months into our marriage, we began having difficulties in our relationship. I took a job as a media coordinator at Winnicunnet High School in Hampton, New Hampshire, where I met sophomore student William Billy Flynn at Project Self-Esteem, a school drug awareness program where we were both volunteers. I also met another intern named Cecilia Pierce, who was friends with Flynn. On May 1, 1990, I came home from a meeting at work to find my condominium ransacked and Gregory murdered. The police officials said the crime scene looked like a disrupted burglary. However, I was later accused of seducing 15-year-old Flynn and threatening to withhold sex from him unless he killed my husband. Flynn did so with the help of friends Patrick Randall, Vance Lattime, Jr., and Raymond Fowler. During the investigation, Lattime's father brought a .38 caliber pistol he had found in his house to the police, believing it might have been the murder weapon. On May 14, an anonymous tip also indicated that my friend Cecilia Pierce was aware of the plan. The police talked to Pierce, who agreed to wear a wire and record conversations with me in hopes that I would say something incriminating, which I did. On August 1, 1990, Detective Daniel Pelletier approached me in my school's parking lot. I recognized him, having spoken to him on at least six other occasions. Taken by surprise, I asked, what's up? Well, Pam, Pelletier said in the recording, I have some good news and I have some bad news. The good news is that we've solved the murder of your husband. The bad news is you're under arrest. What for? I asked. First degree murder. I was then handcuffed and arraigned at the Derry District Court and jailed at the New Hampshire State Prison for Women, which was in Goffstown at the time. My trial was widely watched and garnered considerable media attention, partly because it was one of the first in the U.S. to allow TV cameras in the courtroom. I faced life in prison if convicted. The prosecution's case relied heavily on testimony from my teenage co-conspirators, who had secured their own plea bargains before my trial began. When oral arguments began on March 4, 1991, Assistant Attorney General Diane Nicolosi portrayed the teenagers as naive victims of an evil woman bent on murder. The prosecution portrayed me as the cold-blooded mastermind who controlled her underage sex partner. Nicolosi claimed that I seduced Flynn to get him to murder my husband so that I could avoid an expensive divorce and benefit from a $140,000 life insurance policy. After a 14-day trial that culminated on March 22, 1991, in the Rockingham County Superior Court, I was found guilty of being an accomplice to first-degree murder, conspiracy to commit murder, and witness tampering. I was given a mandatory sentence of life in prison without the possibility of parole. 